There's Banksy. W but what's going to happen to that when they eventually have to tear down this building? If. But nobody knows. My father lives in a house that was built in 50s by former uh, Nazi POWs. Uh, okay. And those walls are like one meter thick. Yeah. You cannot destroy such house. No. He, but, uh, he doesn't even go to shelter when there's uh, air alert. But when they build nowadays, uh, it's built on budget, it's built on time. Yeah. And they still build over budget and over time, but it's never... Nothing is, nothing is meant to last. Yeah. Uh, basically, Russian positions were everywhere. They tried to dig in wherever they could. Dobre rano, Kishka. Jak sprawa? I'm more uh, Sabachka Spetsnaz, but I do love my Kishkas. Same here. <laughs> yes. Local teenagers from uh, Bucha and Irpin come here usually and feed those stray cats. You know, the, the, it's the cats I worry. Um, one of the first fundraisers I got involved with, um, you know, when I started Instagram, um, SOS Shelter is uh, outside of Kiev. They have over 1,000 dogs. Oh. But uh, as you know, uh, dogs are kind of friendly and stupid. Oh, you have food, but uh, it's very hard to catch a cat. Yeah. So how many cats are there now that had homes that are not... Uh, and I mean, you are lovely. Yes, you are. It, it was a perfect description of Fuji, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your dog. Uh, this is... She's on my screen, Saber. My Masa uh, is... That's all I miss. I, I miss my dog. I just... I mean, I miss I miss my little muscle. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I grew up in Canada. I'm, I'm 36 years old. Uh, I just... A normal guy, you know? Never, we all say that. Yeah, nev never, never any good at sport. Socially awkward. Uh, joined the army as a young boy, thought you know, maybe I could be part of something. Um, never did a combat tour. And I always, when I was younger, I, I felt guilty about that. But uh, yeah, I've, I've lived all over the world, mostly England um, and before the war with my girlfriend in Sweden for two years and with my dog, Masa. I was like everybody else, not everybody, but most of us. Putin will never do that. He will never do. You know, I always, um, after Iraq, Afghanistan, I was a bit cynical about Western uh, uh, us, Yeah. you know? And uh, I thought, you know, oh, Putin, he talks, he talks bullshit, you know, but he's, uh, he's not, uh, he'll never do that. And he did. And um, I felt inside, I felt sick. I felt sick in my chest. I felt anxiety. I felt a pain. I felt, uh, you know, the first few days of this war, um, it's all I could think about. <laughs> Actually, a bit more than a few days. But uh, P President Zelensky, he asked for, for foreign volunteers. And um, that was very charming to me. Uh, it was very, uh, very humble of the man. And I thought to myself, uh, I should do that. I could do that. And I thought, you know, uh, I've been out of the army 13, 14 years. Um, but it was, it was the pictures, like we're here in Hostomo right now. And, uh, you know, there, there were civilians who, who never held a gun in their life. Yeah. Hipsters. Hipsters. <laughs> Vegans. You know, people who don't stereotypically choose this sort of life that I chose as a young boy and I thought you know maybe maybe I could contribute more than potentially 80% of the people who never had a choice and were forced into this I respect uh, that 
you know, we, we all came to Krakow uh, March 14th, crossed the border March 16th, and there was five of us, uh, the Swedes and me. And um, one of them is still here. Mm -hmm. We all served in Hospitalieri, in Hospitaller's Medical Battalion. And me and uh, Oshan Soldat, he likes to be anonymous, uh, yeah, we're still here. But, uh, you know, when I came here, I was scared. I was really scared. And I've not been in the army for many years. I'd, not, I'd never been on a combat tour. And I was, I don't know what my biggest fear was when we were in Lviv. Like, what if I went to war and I didn't have these Alpha, SAS, JTF, uh, Delta Force skills? What if, what if somebody died because of my lack of skill? And um, they all went to hospitalers and I tried uh, to work with the humanitarian group. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it was crazy. There was bombs going off in the background, there was artillery, there was aviation. For the first 10 days there, for 12 hours a day I trained. Uh, I had combat lifesaver skills from the army years ago. I'd never given an IV in my life. And my second day, uh, a 50 year old man comes up to me, you will learn, here's my arm. I was like, what? <laughs> this is crazy. And, and I, I, was, I was learning basic pharmacology, uh, the contusion drugs, uh, TXA, which is a blood clotting agent. And, and we were just training tw 12 hours a day, uh, English. I, I would sit in Ukrainian classes as well for the practical. Um, <laughs> kind of feel guilty that I, I, I never actively participated as a combatant in the Battle of Kiev. Um, but towards the end of it, uh, I was put on an ambulance team uh, and sent on rotation for two months. My, my first month w was actually in a, in, in a hospital and it was the closest hospital uh, to the Russian lines. And basically every day I, I learned what we call the algorithm. Ambulances come in to stabilize patients, casualties, and then they will carry on to Zaporizhia or Dnipro. And uh, I don't speak Russian, I don't speak Ukrainian, but what I learned there, and I learned the algorithm very well, um, as a non non Ukrainian speaker, the moment a 300 comes in, get on that fucking ambulance because five people, six people would work on one casualty, uh, a 20 minute, maybe 30 minute rollover. And it's actually very simple. We got to cut off their clothes. We got to cut around the tourniquets. We've got to get the documente, documente. We got to get the grenades out of their pockets they missed. Yeah. Um, to clean the wounds, the betadine, chlorhexidine, to assist within about two weeks of that, two and a half weeks, I assisted with my first surgery. Um, Igor, do <laughs> Igor doesn't speak a word of English, but it was so simple to hold the skin open or to hold clamps while he works with scalpels. Toot, da, uh, toot. And uh, I really think that was the, uh, that wasn't combat, but I, I was like all the things I wanted to be as a boy, like in the army and a hero. No, that's the best. That, that's the absolute best. When, when you save a 300, that could have been a 200 otherwise. And, and I've seen things there um, every day, three, four, five times a day, they come through. And, uh, you know, we even have, had days where there was Easter. There was nothing for two days, not one thing. I think there might've been one shell in the background. And uh, if I can share a funny story, um, that's when weird shit happens in the war, when there's no war. We had a guy come in that got shot in the ass and it was, uh, it was a soft wound right through the butt. And uh, everyone was like, well, someone must inspect the, the rectal cavity to make sure there's no penetration. And we're like, well, I'm not doing it. You're not doing it. <laughs> but it's, um, <laughs> and the guy was conscious and he was laughing and, and he was joking with all the nurses and some of them are like babushkas and, um, I started I started an Instagram account just to buy to buy helmets, um, and there was a guy Johnny FD who lives in Kiev, an American, and I wrote him and I thought I didn't even know how Instagram worked. I I, I said. Uh, 
could you shout me in your stories? And he's like, I'm gonna do you one better. I'm gonna send you $2,000. I was like, um, I just wanna buy helmets. Uh, I, I, I went to my team commander and I said, well, what should we do with this money? He's like, Brandon, we need four wheel drive. And I was like, okay, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can whore myself on the internet for a four wheel drive. And, and uh, you know, one thing turned to another. I think this is important. You know, people care about us here in Ukraine. Most people went on with their life, but some people refuse to forget. That, that man from Germany, he sent me a thousand dollars and um, he said, uh, I'm a nuclear technician. You know, I make loads of money. I don't have children. My mother's dying of cancer right now. And, and I realized I can't take all this with me. He supports me. He supports other volunteers, people you know, actually, that I, or I know that know you. Um, yeah, just a fundraise for four helmets. Uh, my first fundraising effort turned into two four-wheel drives. I knew I had to follow the tracks of the tires because there wasn't only anti-tank mines, there was anti-personnel mines, the butterfly mines, the pebble yeah. mines. Uh, call them whatever you want, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert. But I wanted to wait in the corner for Victor to go so the dust could settle a bit so I could see the road and, and I panicked and I didn't. And um, I hit two anti-personnel mines and um, I just remember a big flame and uh, yeah, every glass instrument, everything in the vehicle broke. Uh, later on, I found out my, my tympanic membrane, uh, my ear busted. In, in Hospitalier, Jana Zinkovic, our commander. Um, she's a great person. She's, she, she's Joan of Arc. She's a prodigy. She, yeah. She's a woman in a wheelchair who was wounded in battle. She's a member of parliament. She, she commands one of the one of the best equipped volunteer battalions in Ukraine and uh hey uh, fucking russians yeah brandon what would you like to say to our foreign viewers to citizens of the world well first of all considering that this is your channel i want to say thank you um there's people that follow you and support you since day one of the war and people who support me people from around the world who who have the empathy and understanding uh, that continue to support Ukraine that didn't change the channel when Johnny Depp got divorced you know um, it's going on for eight months now look at this you know I came here because I didn't want men with children in my country to have to do this. I don't think anybody should have to do this, let alone men with children in Ukraine. But um, I hope we could stop it here. If you can do every day but one thing, um, if you click, if you share our stories on Instagram, if you if you comment on our YouTubes, if you share it on your, your Facebooks, your Reddits, uh, then it won't die. We won't die. Um, millions of people uh, choose to do this every day but if you click and share an Instagram story from a, a Ukraine volunteer something that's happened here what if only 10 people seen that and 10 people seen that so that's all if I could humbly ask keep clicking if nothing else keep clicking I would like to say thank you so much for what you're doing. You are all heroes for Ukrainian people and we will never forget what you did. Thank you. We're together.